Hi, it's Sarah with House Copper, and today by popular request, I am doing a very detailed close up of the basic tin and copper smithing um, traditional hand rotary machines or tools so that when you are looking for uh, what to buy on eBay or uh, at tool swaps or at garage sales or estate sales, you have a resource to go to to see what you're buying, make sure you know what the machine is, if it has all its parts. And um, we're gonna do this one tool by one tool um, instead of me doing all of them in one go round. And hopefully that will help us get a little bit more detailed. So we're gonna start with the most important tool in my opinion and in Bob's opinion, which is the burring machine. It is um, sometimes used for turning on really small diameters. So you might see it listed as a turning machine, but it is a burring machine and it is one of the most annoying and difficult ones to learn how to operate, but it also is by far um, the most important and most used, I think, in the, the trade. So without further ado, let's head over to the burring machine. Here is a burring machine. So mine is a, uh, what you would say, an older model because it is a closed body. Anything with an open gearbox is an older model, one that was one of the first patented ones. The brass tops are often coveted, but this burring machine is a closed body piece. This was made by Stowe Manufacturing before they became Peck Stowe and Wilcox, otherwise known as Peck Stowe right now. Uh, so this is a really old model just because of that. It was uh, patented in 1867. Um, as opposed to the early 1800s with the open gearbox. So the biggest things to look for when you're looking for a burring machine are a few things. Obviously you want this top tightening crank to be threaded correctly. If it's fallen out, it may mean it's no longer threaded. If it's jammed in and you or dented, like this area can sometimes get dented and pull this this area out, that's bad. Um, you'd have to either remake one or try and rethread the grooves. Um, so you want this crank to be in good working order. The way that you know it's a burring machine is it's got a 90 degree angle right here on the bottom um, uh, shaft and then a very thin plate here. So sometimes you know, people will say, oh, you know, it's a, it's a burring machine, but it's actually a turning machine, which has a different bottom and a wider top. So your burring machine is, that's how you, you know it is, this 90 degree angle. You also want to see if this area here, this face, the, the one that's dented in, is still at 90 degrees. With time and use, if somebody's tightening this top face against the bottom, this bottom rung here can get uh, slightly misshapen and have like almost like a, a 45 degree, very little angle. And that's gonna mess up your burrs. You want this space to be 90 degrees if you can, otherwise you'll have to redo that. Something else to look at around here on the back side. Well, if you wanna come around right here, this shaft, you want this to be in decent working order because that's going to give you your working interface for depth, for your depth stop. It's a little bit of a pain um, if it's not working because then you have to, to rig something up here to give yourself a good depth stop. And then of course you want your, bot, your back crank to work. So those are the main things to look for short of asking any, any seller to take it all apart. Um, you can take these apart and clean them up on the inside, but you really want some of these m basic places to be in working order before you A, uh, purchase it, and B, know that it is a burring machine. So there is our first close up encounter with the tools of the tin and copper smithing trade and rotary hand tools. I will do one for every, vi every a video for every machine. And um, if you have any comments, questions, thoughts, input, please leave it in the comments. I love to hear from you. And if you have any other ideas of what kind of um, videos you wanna see about this, let me know. Don't forget to subscribe and share and tell everybody about how amazing it is to learn about old tools. I have to say it. My husband like gets mad at me when he's like, you forgot to tell them to subscribe. So anyway, don't forget, thank you for watching and I will see you the next time.